Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss the two conventional methods of the irrigation that is the percolation tank and the bandara irrigation technique. And after that, we will look at the irrigation scheduling. So let's start. So first conventional technique is known as the percolation tank. Now what is this percolation tank? So as we know that the rainwater harvesting that has been taken as the national level project in India because of the scarcity of the water. Now in fact there are many groundwater recharge movements in India which have been active over the past few years. Now in present there are many government and the non-government bodies which are working in this area and they are giving us the solution for the groundwater recharge. Now among these solutions the percolation tank is the most traditional one but still a popular method. Now what is this percolation tank? As you can see this blue shaded area this is representing the percolation tank. So it is an artificial reservoir which is constructed across the stream. Now what it does it submerges a land area which is having the sufficient permeability so that the percolation of the water that may take place. Now this percolated water it adds up to the groundwater and it recharges the groundwater and slowly this groundwater level that increases. So that's why this is a technique for the groundwater recharge or the harvesting of the water. Now as you can see here this image is representing the actual percolation tank. So these sites are made as the impervious for the percolation of the water. This is impervious site while the central portion this is the permeable layer of the soil. Now the size of the percolation tank that should be governed by the percolation capacity of the strata. If the capacity of the soil is such that the more water can be percolated through that then the percolation tank will be of the larger sizes. Normally the capacity of the percolation tank that varies from 0.1 to 0.5 million cubic meter. Now generally the ponded water column that means the height of the water which is stored in this percolation tank that is between 3 to 4.5 meter that is between one floor. Now as the water percolates through the percolation tank the increase in the water table that leads to the raising of the water levels in the wells because the ultimately ground water that is recharged that is reflected in the form of the water level in the ground water bodies and the most common example of that is the walls. So if the water level is increasing that means the level of the water in the well that will also be increasing and because of that there will be chances of the help in the increased lift irrigation which accounts for the reduction in the evaporation loss of the water and therefore it reduces the cost of the irrigation and thus it reduces the cost of the irrigation because ultimately what it does it reduces the height up to which we need to supply the water. So if we are getting naturally that height then the cost of the irrigation that will be reduced. Then second of the conventional method of the irrigation is the Bandara irrigation which is practiced in the regions of the Maharashtra. Now it comes under the minor irrigation project that means the area under the irrigation project that is in between 5 to 2000 hectares. Now this approach or the technique of the irrigation it uses the approach of the direct irrigation that means the water which is stored that is directly used for the irrigation purposes. Now what is this Bandara? This is a machinery diversion weir. What we construct the small check dens. These are the small diversion of the small height. Now the purpose of these diversion is to store the water so that the water level is raised. Now as the water will be stopped behind this the water level will slowly be increasing. And that stored water that will be diverted in the other direction to irrigate the field which is under the irrigation. So the object is to raise the water level and ultimately to serve the purpose of the irrigation during the long dry spell when the water and the rainfall is not coming that is during the monsoon. Now what are the different advantages and disadvantages related to it? So as we know that the irrigation technique it involves the a number of instruments but if we are able to achieve the desired level of the water with the help of such construction then it is an economical one. Second one is that the irrigated area which is getting the supply from the diverted water then 
it is very compact it is defined already so the irrigation will be intensive that means we will be getting again and again the same amount of the water and the water of the small catchments which would otherwise have gone waste that is now fully utilized that is the main advantage of the bandara irrigation now there are certain limitations related to it as well so as the irrigable area the area which is to be irrigated that is already fixed so if more water is available let's say if there is rainfall and the more water is diverted then that extra water that additional water that cannot be used for the irrigation purposes also if the water level in the river if that is non perennial that means it is not constant throughout the year then there will be uncertainty regarding the supply of the water that is also the limitation and if the number of bandara that means if the number of diversions are created across the stream then the people which are dependent upon the level of the water in the stream they will be adversely affected now what is this irrigation scheduling now as we know for the efficient management of the irrigation system it is necessary that a sufficient amount of water is supplied to the plants let's say this is the plant which is the root zone and this is the plant which is growing above the ground level this is the ground level which has been represented here now now let's say the water is required after every 7 days and the amount of water that is required that is 10 cm so that means for the efficient management of the irrigation system this much amount of water has to be supplied at the required time so this necessity that amount of water that is required and at certain time that leads to the irrigation scheduling now what is this irrigation scheduling it estimates the starting time the stopping time and the quantity of water for the different cycles of the irrigation during the crop period the total time during which the crop starts or the seed is sown to the time period up to which the crop is fully matured so this time period that is known as the crop period and in that there will be different phases of the irrigation so during that entire period what will be the actual amount of water that will be required that is classified or that is scheduled under the irrigation scheduling to estimate that amount of water that falls under the category of the irrigation scheduling now this can be determined using either of the three approaches that we are having first one is the soil moisture depletion approach second one is the climatological approach which uses the evaporation and the rainfall data and third one is the farmers existing scheduling approach now the first one that is the soil moisture depletion approach now let's say this was the ground level and in this the seed was sown and this is the root zone of the plant and this was the amount of water that was already present now let's say this was the amount of water or this was the level of the water that was already present now due to the use of the water by the plant the water table has dropped down that means the moisture level which is present within the soil that has depleted down and based upon this when the water level has depleted in the soil only then we will be irrigating this soil so that's how we schedule the irrigation technique that is the first one second one is the climatological approach that means now if due to the harsher conditions of the weather or due to the climate conditions if there are more chances of the evapotranspiration that means the loss of the water to the atmosphere or if there are lesser chances of the effective rainfall that has been happening that means we will be requiring the irrigated water we will be requiring the supply of the irrigation that's how we schedule that irrigation and the farmers existing schedule approach in this the farmer uses the traditional knowledge in this farmer uses the traditional knowledge or mostly that is the intuition based that when the rainfall will be happening and the what amount of water will be required so that is based mostly upon the experience now when we study all these three techniques so for a sample this udaipur region of rajasthan that was studied for the wheat crop and it was indicated that the soil moisture depletion approach that results in the maximum water use efficiency so out of these three what we concluded that this water use efficiency will be maximum when we will be using the soil moisture depletion approach so that completes the irrigation scheduling and all the topics related to the flow of the method of the irrigation in the next video we will look at the hydrological cycle and the other things related to that thank you